5.5, apply the remainder and factor theorems. Here, the if and only if flies away, and we abbreviate if and only if with IFF, oftentimes in math. And if and only if means a statement holds true both ways. So what I mean by that is, if we say something like, if A, then B, that relationship only holds one way. A leads to B. And I can say, if B, then A, and that would mean B leads to A. But you'll see that these arrows are only in one direction. However, if I say B, if and only if A, that is bidirectional, and that means B, if and only if A. So it goes both ways. We're going to warm up here with some long division because what we're doing today involves polynomial long division. So we may as well start with some long division to remind yourself. So when we do 159 divided by 4, what we do is, well, we can't do 1 divided by 4, so we go to 15. 15 divided by 4 is 3, and then 3 times 4 is 12. And then remember, we subtract them, and so we get 39. Then we go 39 divided by 4, which is 9, and 9 times 4 is 36. And then we subtract them, and we get 3, which means that our remainder is 3, and you can always write the remainder as a fractional part, 3 over 4. And so my answer would be 39 and 3 fourths. So now we're going to use that same exact principle to divide these two polynomials. So what you want to make sure when you're writing these is that, you know, all the places are accounted for. So what I mean in this one, we have x cubed plus 3x squared, but write the plus 0x, write that as your placeholder, because you need to have the cubed, the squared, the x, and then just the constant. And this one already has the squared, the x, and then the constant. So that one's fine. So x cubed plus 3x squared plus 0x minus 7 divided by x squared minus x minus 2. Again, do not forget the placeholder. Now what you do when you're trying to divide these is you look here at that x squared and you try and divide x cubed divided by x squared and that leaves you with just x. And then you do the same thing that we did before. So you divide and then you go and multiply. So x times x squared is x cubed. Now you need to do this and distribute it to each term. Okay, so that's the difference. So now we do x times negative x is negative x squared. And then you do x times negative 2 is negative 2x. And then, just like we did with the long division, we need to subtract. So I'm going to just change all the signs. And that's because I need to subtract the two. And so that gets rid of the x cubed. And now I have 4x squared plus 2x. And then you bring down the 7, just like you did with long division. Next step, just like I did here, I just look at the first thing here and I divide it by the x squared. So 4x squared divided by x squared is just plus 4. So 4 times x squared is 4x squared. And then 4 times negative x is minus 4x. And then 4 times negative 2 is minus 8 and then you're gonna subtract them. So again, I'm going to just change all the signs here. So 4x squared minus 4x squared, that gets rid of that. 2 plus 4 is 6x plus 1. And now I cannot divide any further. I've gone all the way down because I can't, this is a smaller power than this one. And so this is just my remainder. And so just how I wrote it before, this would be plus the remainder part over this. 
Now let me just do that long division problem once more. I know I just did it, but I just want to show you the similarity between the two. So the first step is you can't divide this by this, so you go for the 15 divided by 4, and you get 3. Then you do 3 times 4, and you get 12. And then you subtract, so you get 3. And then you bring down that 9. 39 divided by 4 is 9. 9 times 4 is 36. And then you subtract the 2, and you get 3. When you can't bring anything else down, that is your remainder. And so you just add it on over here. Now the reason I don't need the plus sign here is because it's just implied. 39 and 3 fourths is 39 plus 3 fourths. It's the same thing. So let's do it again. You'll notice that this one has a cubed, a squared, an x, and a constant. And this just has an x and a constant. So I don't need any placeholders here. So 3x cubed plus 17x squared plus 21x minus 11 divided by x plus 3. All right, so we'll take this 3x cubed and try and divide it by x. And we get 3x squared. 3x squared times x is 3x cubed. And then 3x squared times 3 is plus 9x squared. Now you're going to subtract. So I'm going to change all of my signs. Those cross out, and we get 8x squared, and then bring something down, plus 21x. Next step, look at this and divide it by the x. So we get plus 8x. 8x times x is 8x squared, plus 3 times 8 is 24x. And then we're going to subtract them. Again, switch all the signs. So those cross out, and we get negative 3x, and now I have this negative 11 to pull down. The negative 3x divided by x is negative 3, so we put minus 3. Minus 3 times x is negative 3x. Minus 3 times 3 is minus 9. Now I'm going to subtract them, so change all the signs. And those cross out, and we're left with negative 2. So negative 2 is my remainder. And I'll write that as minus 2 over what I was dividing by, the x plus 3. In general, if a polynomial f of x is divided by x minus k, so we have f of x, and we're dividing it by x minus k, then the remainder we can write as r equals f of k. Okay, so that's just notation. Now let's divide using synthetic division. And I'm going to be honest, I like synthetic division better. I think it's much easier than long division, but you can do either way you prefer. Now remember we were doing synthetic substitution and I told you that it would come back and it's gonna come back right now. So the first thing I'm going to do for myself is just put some of these um, placeholders here so I remember what I'm doing. I'm going to first do the cubes, then the squares, then the x's, and then the constants. Because remember, when you are doing synthetic division, you only are looking at the coefficients. And so I just want to remember what I'm doing, so I'm putting that there. So the coefficient of the x cubed is the 2, the coefficient of the x squared is a 9, 14, and 5. Now what we put out here, this is what x equals. In other words, our 0. And so we have to figure out what our 0 is. If we have x minus 3, then that means that x equals 3 is our 0. We call the x minus 3 a factor but the x equals 3 is our 0, because when we set it equal to 0, we would get x equals 3. And so we stick the 3 out here. Now when we're doing synthetic division, the way it worked was that you just pull this down first, 2, and then you multiply, 6. Now the difference here is that you add, okay? You're going to add these two and you get 15. Multiply again, you get 45. Add the 2, you get 59. Then multiply, and you get 177. So 177 plus 5 is 182. 
Okay, now I've done synthetic division, but what does this mean? What this means is the following. We start now with the remainder, and then we go constant x, x squared. So you'll see that when we divide, just like when we divided in the last example, when I divided something by the x, my answer part, the exponent, goes down by 1 because I just divided by x. So the same thing here. My final answer here is 2x squared plus 15x plus 59, and then my remainder is just that 182 part. 182 over, I was dividing, remember, by x minus 3. Okay, so I think that's easier than long division because it's a lot less steps in my mind, but you would get the same answer using long division too. We're going to do another synthetic division in a moment. Um, I know this is brand new. The factor theorem is that a polynomial f of x has a factor x minus k if and only if f of k equals 0. What does this mean? Basically, we just learned that the remainder was f of k. Well, this means that the remainder is equal to 0. And a factor is just that we are able to divide by it. That's the definition of a factor. If we can divide by it and not get a remainder, that means that it's a factor. That's really all that factors are. And so that's all this is saying. It's saying that it has a factor if, when we divide it, the remainder is 0. All right, so that's not very technical at all. But I'm just saying, in general, it has a factor when the remainder is 0, when we go and divide by it. So let's do an example here. We're going to use synthetic division again, and we're going to understand what a factor means. So let's see if I need any placeholders. Let's see, we have the cube term, then we have the squared term, then we have the x term, then we have the constant term. All right, so the cube term is a 2, negative 11, 3, 36. Great, that was easy. And then what we're going to put out here is the 0. So that means that x equals 3 is my 0. And so we put the 3 out here, pull this one down to multiply 6, Add them up, negative 5, multiply, negative 15, add them up, negative 12, and then multiply them, negative 36, boom, there's a 0. So this means that my remainder is 0. I have no remainder. And then I would go constant, just go the reverse here, constant x, x squared. So my answer is 2x squared minus 5x minus 12. Now, what is this question asking me? This question is actually asking me to factor. Now, listen real carefully. I determined that when I divided this by this, I got this. So what I want to do is I want to reconstruct this as what times what times what equals this. I'm trying to factor this down. Factoring down basically means, like, if I had 30, for instance, to factor it down, I would be like, okay, 2 times 15, and then I would say, oh, I could factor 15 down even more. So that's 2 times 3 times 5. Okay, so this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to find the factors. I just divided by one thing, and I got this left. So right now, I have that f of x, okay, f of x is that big thing, is equal to... One of the things I divided by was x minus 3, and what I got left was 2x squared minus 5x minus 12. This is equivalent to saying, well, 30, if I divide it by 2, I get 15 left, okay? And now I want to see if I could factor this down anymore. So let me just try and factor the good old-fashioned way since I know how to do it. Let's see, let's try a 3 and a 4. That's 8 and 3, so minus 8 plus 3 would work. And so factor down this is what f of x is equal to. Keep with me. We're going to do the same thing in the next example. This one's just written a little bit differently. This says factor this guy given that f of negative 3 equals 0. Remember, this is using our f of x notation. So this is the x value. 
and this is the y value. So this means that when x equals negative 3, we have a 0. So x equals negative 3 is one of our zeros. If x equals negative 3 is a 0, what is our factor? Our factor is, push it over here, x plus 3. x plus 3 is our factor if x equals negative 3 is a 0. And so I'm going for synthetic division again. All right, cubed, squared, x, constant. 2, 11, 18, 9. Remember, you stick your 0 out here, and our 0 is just the negative 3. All right, pull this down, 2. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Add them up, 5. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. Add them up, 3. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, and we get 0. Now you should get 0 as the remainder because it said that this was a 0. And so this is the remainder, meaning this is the constant. This is the x and this is the x squared. So I could rewrite this as 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. And that's one of them. And now I want to write this as a factor. Remember, x plus 3 was the actual factor. Okay, can I factor this down? We have x plus 3. And then let's see, 2x and x. Uh, if I put a 3 and a 1 here, then I would want one of the signs to be negative, and that wouldn't work. So let's try a 3 and a 1 instead. 2 and 3 is 5x, so that works. So this is it all the way factored down. Okay, now another problem. It's the same thing again, and again, they're telling you a 0. So one of the zeros is x equals 4. That means that the factor is, scoot it over, x minus 4. But I'm going to use this for synthetic division. So cubed squared x constant. All right, we have a 1, and then we have another 1, and then we have a negative 16, and we have another negative 16, and our 0 is 4. Pull this down, 1. Multiply, 4. Add them, 5. Multiply, 20. Add them, 4. Multiply, 16. Add them, 0. So the remainder, again, is 0, which it should be. Whenever we're dividing by a factor, we should get a 0 remainder. This is the constant x, x squared. And so right now we have it factored down into the factor that we divided by was x minus 4, and then we have left 1x squared plus 5x plus 4. Can we factor that down? Yes, yes we can. x and x, 4 and 1, plus and plus, and that is how I factor it, but they're asking me to find the other zeros. So my other zeros would be when x plus 4 equals 0 and when x plus 1 equals 0. In other words, when x equals negative 4 and when x equals negative 1. Those are my other two zeros. Note that because of these two are zeros, okay, this is not part of what the question's asking, but this means that f of negative 4 is equal to 0 and it also means that f of negative 1 is equal to 0 because there's zero. And that's it for this lesson. Bye.